Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. In this, in his refined understanding, this is more refined now, huh? he awakens completely to subtle principles. Everything is in accord with his wishes. He may suddenly experience limitless lightness and ease in his mind. He may say that he has become a sage and attain great self-mastery. This is called attaining lightness and clarity due to wisdom. He's already something big shot. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. The Buddha passed through all this, otherwise he wouldn't have known to teach you. Okay? But he mastered it, yeah? Even the Maya sent some beautiful girl, sexy, come dancing, seducing him and say, get lost. <laughs> I know who you are, get lost. Same Jesus meditate in the desert 40 days, remember? Uh, so Maya come and tell him, if you respect bow to me, I give you the whole world. So what did he say? Get lost also. Okay, now. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon that likes lightness and clarity will enter his mind. <sighs> I'm telling you. So cut it off if you think you're Buddha, yeah? Cut it off, all of you, <laughs> whoever, whoever telling me that you're on a seven or nine spiritual plane, yeah. Claiming that he is already satisfied, he will not strive to make further progress. That is the problem with all these stages that we have mentioned, that the Buddha has mentioned. You too, feel too good. You never felt like this before in your whole life. There's something new. But these are just toys. It's like children, you know, you have good toy, bad toy, or more enchanting toys, and more new toys, more invented toys, but these are toys yet. If he's satisfied with that, he will not know all the real toys, you know. He play with the small cars, he didn't know there is a real one. Yeah. Oh, this is a problem. Yeah. If we are not satisfied with that, then we go further. But if we think we are great already, then we stop. That is a problem. Yeah. It's a pity, yeah? For the most part, such cultivators will become like the unlearned bhikshu, monk, huh? unlearned monk. He will mislead living beings so that they will fall into the avicii hell, or oh, this is worse. Like in proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. My God, Maya, so cruel. That is a problem. If you really want to become a Buddha, he will be so harsh on you. That is the thing. That's why. Otherwise, how can you put somebody in hell? He's just practicing. Maybe he has not become a Buddha, but he harmed no one. You see that? They make all kind of this, you know, I'm telling you, rule. Really? What kind of rule is that? What kind of law is that? Huh? This guy, he just practiced. Maybe he don't have teachers or he mistaken thinking that he become Buddha. Fine, but he harms no one, right? He may be boasting or being arrogant, but that's uh, nobody's business, huh? And if anybody is stupid enough following him, it's also not his fault. Why you have to go to hell? A witchy hell is the hell that you can't get out. So woe to you if you want to become a Buddha and not controlling your desire or, or your ambition or your mind. Huh? Must always humble, humble. I'm nobody yet, okay? Nobody. Just a little light, a little sound, not yet, okay? Actually, most of you don't think that you will become a Buddha. <laughs> you think that, okay, Master Power will help you to be liberated and go to higher level so you don't have to suffer again and your five, six, nine generations don't suffer. I think that is good enough, okay, huh? Yes, to be Buddha. Look at that, huh? 
I read this long, long time ago. I forgot that it's so gruesome like this. I forgot that it's so terrible. <sighs> but it's good to know, huh? It's good to know. So you can avoid trouble. Mm? Okay. Further, <laughs> still continue. <laughs> Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees, you know, he know, he see that it's all the form that he saw, the scenery, it's all from skanda. He already know it. At least he knows that it is an uh, illusion. And at least he know, he understands that it's just a skanda feeling and all that is all illusionary. It's not real. He know that. But still, huh? And in this clear awakening, he experiences an illusory clarity. Within that, suddenly he may veer towards the view of eternal or extinction, deny cause and effect. He denied, he reject the karma theory, the karma, uh, you know, law. Yes, and then, and take everything as empty. There's nothing at all, don't worry, no karma, whatever you do, there's no effect, no, uh, no hell, no heaven, nothing. The thought of emptiness so predominates that he comes to believe that there is eternal extinction after death, meaning there's nothing after you die. Yeah, he's so convinced because he, he sees so many things, he sees all the ten directions, and he see that all the elements that made up his body, it's just illusion anyway. During Samadhi, he don't feel he has a nose, a hand, a ears, eye, nothing, no body. So, so he feel that this is nothing really real. So when you die, also finito. This is bad. You know why? Because then you can do anything without fearing the consequences of the afterlife within, without fear in hell. Maybe because of that, someone has attained this stage or following someone who has attained this kind of view, they become fanatic. Nothing that, that can scare them. Nothing or illusion anyway. But this is called the mental state of samadhi dissolving so that one loses sight of what is right. Ah, if he understands, then there is no error. This experience still does not indicate sagehood. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon of emptiness will enter his mind. How can you believe that such a high stage of enlightenment already still, the, the demon still can use your mind? Understand, because the mind is not the soul. Yeah, the mind is, is, is a subtle, a higher, higher kind of uh, instrument. The brain is instrument, yeah, physical, we understand that. The mind is just a more refined computer, yeah, high tech. <laughs> the mind is made at the second level. Therefore, if you go down from the fifth level to, to this world to do something or to help, beings, you have to go through the second level to be equipped <laughs> with the mind. It's just like if you want to dive into the sea, you must go and wear this kind of frock clothes, yeah, like that. So the mind is easily to be swayed, that's why, because it's not high level, it's not the soul, it's not eternal, it's just made by second level. It's just like one of the clothing you have to wear when you go down to this world. Without the mind, you can't function here. <laughs> the mind dictates the brain, the brain dictates the body. And if the mind is wrong, everything belongs to you, wrong. You're thinking wrong, you act wrong, yeah. you behave wrong. Wow. So, the demon of emptiness can enter somebody else's mind like this. And then he will, he will slander the holding of precepts. Even he slandered the moral codes, yeah. calling it a practice of the initial vehicle, 
meaning he looked down upon the people who hold a precept and the moral uh, standard as just, you know, like a baby, like <laughs> kindergarten. Yeah, imagine. He will say, since the bodhisattvas have awakened to emptiness, what is there to hold or violate? This is also dangerous. That means he don't care what he does. Eh? And then he might do something wrong, harm other beings that he thinks is no problem anyway. Yeah, I saw some do this. Maybe not to that extreme, but uh, I heard many. And not many, but because I don't know that many people. I saw some story in some of the magazine, you know, spiritual magazine. Some of the monks say, oh, I already make peace in the world. <laughs> Meaning because everything is empty, war and peace is no problem, no need to worry about it. Mean because inside he has peace already. Meaning that even outside no peace, inside he has peace. So if you have peace inside, that means outside doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter who die, who kill each other, that this, they still suffer, you know, even illusionally, the, the beings still suffer in war. So you cannot say it, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> just because you have peace. It's just like a rich person. Every day he eats a lot of food and then he says, oh, what means hungry? Hungry is no problem. Huh? Uh, it's all garbage talk, yeah? Tell him, tell them to eat cakes, <laughs> just like <laughs> the Queen of, of France. Because she has no idea. You lost touch with real life, yeah? Same, this person like that. Wow, there's so many, huh? Mm. Mm. There's so many, so many. But the Buddha has also told you here how to guard yourself and how to continue progress, yeah? If we have time and continue further, okay? Uh, right now, I continue with the demon, <laughs> so that you will recognize when they come, <clears throat> and then you can protect yourself, okay, and go for higher. Oh my God! Okay. So, because of this false view, influenced by this kind of demon, he will uh, slander those withholding the precepts, like the monks, the nuns, they're strict with their precepts, he will look down upon them, he will degrade them, he will slander them. That is a no-no, of course. Huh? If, even if you're not a monk, you know a monk, if he has his moral code, then it's good, right? At least good for him, good for society. Why, why go and slander them? Yeah. Now, but not only that, he thinks he already attained emptiness, everything is empty, everything illusion, yeah, so he can do what he wants. So further than that, he will... This person in the presence of his faithful dana parties, meaning his, um, his uh, so-called disciples, yeah? yeah, will often drink wine, eat meat, and engage in wanton lust. The power of the demon will keep his followers from doubting or denouncing him, even if he's doing all this wrong thing, uh, drinking wine, drinking alcohol, eating meat, engaging in lustful conduct. But the demon power is so strong that anyone who near him, near this person, will be kept from being doubtful. I have no demon to control you. <laughs> Yeah, of course. At least you're free, okay? You're free. If you doubt me, at least you know you're free. <laughs> Nobody control you, yeah? So even if I'm wrong, you have no danger, because you, you're free to doubt or not doubt. You see that? At least, huh? You doubt me, it's good. I wasn't angry at all. I'm just saying, oh, you see all that experience, and you still doubt me, but I never... F felt angry or so angry? No, I, I wasn't, okay? That means good. <laughs> that means it's good. That means that you are free, that I don't oppress you or saying something or psychologically uh, suppress you so that you don't dare to even doubt me. You're all free, even you're enlightened or not, you're free. <laughs> because 
if a master use some magical power or some psychic or something, then you be hold under his or her sway. You 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 don't even cannot even think the master is wrong. Here, this person, because of demon power, so even though he drink <coughs> wine, eat meat, and engage in lust and all that wanton lust, not just having a, a wife or a husband, wanton lust meaning just random, meaning no good all the time, any time. So, so this is no good. The power of the demon will keep his followers from doubting or denouncing him even. After the ghost has possessed him for a long time, he may even consume excrement and urine, or meat and wine, claiming that all such things are empty anyway. Whew. He will break the Buddha's moral precepts and mislead people into committing offenses. Like in proper Samadhi, he will certainly fall. He fell already. He fell already. Huh? Not just certainly fall, but he fell already. Further, in, if, you know, if he continue with this state, further in this state of Samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. He savors the state of illusory clarity and it deeply enters his mind and bones, become his nature then. Boundless love may suddenly well forth from his mind. When that love becomes extreme, he goes insane with greed and lust. The Buddha don't mean love as, as loving, but as uh, this kind of uh, sexual, you know, uh, Attachment love, yeah? In this world, we use everything, love, love, love. It's all confusing, yeah? But the Buddha means bodily attachment. Yeah? And that's why if it's become more extreme, then he goes insane with greed and lust. He cannot stop. So but this state is called when an agreeable state of somebody enter one's mind, lacking the wisdom to control oneself and mistakenly engaging in lustful behavior. Okay. If he understands that it's just one of the state, okay, then it will pass. Then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sages. Of course not. <laughs> How can you are sage if you still have greed and lust? But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon of desire will enter his mind. Oh God, so many demons. When will we even see any bodhisattva enter somebody's mind and help something? <laughs> I want to turn the table. Yeah, really. Just demons all the time is no fun. Uh, the Buddha and Bodhisattva, why are they so gentle? Why don't they just do something? Turn the table, huh? Oh man, I have to look into this. I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't like it. That's not fair. I don't like it that the Buddha has to suffer so much life after life, kaupas after kaupas, so that he can just save a handful of his disciples like that and still be in slanders, still be in doubted. I don't like that. Never mind if this is all illusion or life after life, illusion or not, never mind. It is still suffering. He still has to carry on the flesh body. And when you have the flesh, you suffer. Huh? He even has to become animals or insects even. Like I told you the story about the gecko and all that. Uh. And then the demon of desire will enter his mind, then he will become an outspoken advocate of lust, calling it the way to body. body. Oh man, you know one of them are like that. Not not long ago, no? some years ago. Yeah, advocate lust, for sure. That is true. I saw it printed. His preaching about lustful encouragement uh, printed on newspaper. It's printed like that. Yeah, I was surprised, you know, but a lot, a lot of people follow him and they worship him. Oh, I heard many stories. It was really true, eh? You know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many people. If you think I have a lot of followers, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's just, it just a, 
one centimeter what I have as followers compared to one meter long or two, three, ten meters. It's very appealing to the world. Of very appealing. Yeah. They call each other, come here, come and have a look, come and listen here. <laughs> they sell in things, they go there, you know, selling their house and stuff. You go there to listen. I went all over the world and <laughs> look at how many I have. <laughs> Don't even have a house <laughs> for you. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. If that were so easy, yeah? I'm too strict, you know. Must be vegan, huh? Must meditate two and a half hours, huh? Must keep the five precepts, yeah? Who like that? <laughs> how many people want? To, to follow a woman who asked them to do this kind of thing against their own habit and nature. So don't, don't, don't compare me to other masters. I don't have a lot of disciples, for sure. I don't need, I don't care. <laughs> if you're my disciple, so-called disciple, you must meditate, eat vegan, five precepts. And that is that. <laughs> no bargain, okay? okay. Yeah.